biology. We learn that the Earth's own natural magnetic field peaks, that means peaks top, at 32 hertz. And that only happens in certain equatorial thunderstorms. The electronics we use today generate electromagnetic fields that are tremendous in the megahertz and gigahertz, million hertz and billion hertz range. So here you can see Earth and nature up at the top, 3 to 30 hertz. You can see HARP has a low range. Then you see the Gwen Towers, that's Ground Wave Emergency Network, the blue. HARP again has another range right after that. Gwen has another range after that. And look at the phones and internet. We're talking about million hertz and billion hertz. Professor Aidy reminds us that chemical bonds are magnetic bonds formed between atoms by paired electrons with opposite spins that are attracted magnetically. So if nature itself moves in the 3 to 30 hertz range, what is happening to us on the biochemical level with all the different frequencies our bodies are experiencing? What is being done to our biology? Again, I'll repeat Ross Aidy's little tenet here. Chemical bonds are magnetic bonds. Electromagnetism is capable of changing what is happening in our bodies. Frequencies are capable of supplying to the synthetic materials in our bodies the force or power that activates them, gets them working, makes them come alive. Nothing about us today is normal. We have hair that glows and skin that shimmers. This is from a healthy woman in Oregon who's been doing microscopy. And if you go to Mike and Jennifer's table, they can demonstrate some of this iridescent um, effect for you. Here is a glowing little arrow-shaped thing found in rainwater when the same woman who supplied the former um, images, previous images, was scanning. She was scanning water from a puddle under her microscope, and she saw this arrow-shaped thing that gl glowed. And here's a hexagon that grew a fiber in 20 seconds as it was being observed under the microscope. The field of synthetic biology is a new frontier of science. It draws from biochemistry and biomedicine, genetics, robotics, radiation biology, and information technologies. Using nanotechnology, its goals are to improve and transcend the limits of nature. On February 21st of this year, Time magazine had a feature story on the singularity, the term signifying the merging of man with machine. The story was released on Valentine's Day, February 14th, to underscore a love affair, the marriage of humanity and technology. The article tells us that a transformation is coming and our species, Homo sapien, will no longer be recognizable as itself. We will be something new, something better. The time predicted for this transformation is 2045. The man who is making this prediction is Ray Kurzweil, a futurist known for his uncanny accuracy in just this area the pace at which technology grows and improves, such that it will one day be smarter and better than us. That's the singularity. There's a singularity university hosted by NASA, sponsored by Google to teach people about the intelligence explosion. Ray Kurzweil has made fortunes over and over as an engineer and inventor. A documentary about him is called The Transcendent Man. He wrote the best-selling book that you see here, The Singularity is Near, which came out in 2005. Singularity is a word from astrophysics referring to a point in space-time where the rules of ordinary physics no longer apply. Kurzweil has correctly predicted the growth of information technologies. He has made it clear to the world that technological progress is exponential, not linear, which means that advancement begins to advance itself in a manner of speaking. Exponential curves start slowly and then explode. A quote from the Time Magazine article 
In Kurzweil's future, biotechnology and nanotechnology give us the power to manipulate our bodies and the world around us at will, at the molecular level. We ditch Darwin and take charge of our own evolution. The question is, who is we and what is at will? Whose will? Kurzweil predicts that by 2020, we will have successfully reverse engineered the human brain. And when hyper-intelligent artificial intelligence arrives, all we have to do is hand ourselves off to it. Armed with advanced nanotechnology, AI will solve the problems of the world. Strong AI, they use this term, is a super powerful, broad-spectrum intelligence that operates as easily and comfortably as a human being. It isn't just a chess-playing computer. It's a machine intelligence that can pass for human in a blind test which is as close as you can get to consciousness or sentience. Now, once this kind of intelligence is here, what will it do as a newly created inhabitant of the Earth? Would it compete with us for resources? More intelligent than we are, would it treat us as lesser beings? Would it recognize that we made it, or would it overrun us? Kurzweil is one of the world's leading transhumanists, number 30 on Time's most influential list. Transhumanists believe that we ourselves should merge with machines. Imagine a time when we can download our brains into a computer and upload a computer into our brains. The three great overlapping revolutions, uh, sometimes it goes by the letter GNR, and G stands for genetics, really another word for it is biotechnology, is mastering the information processes in our biology. And we ultimately will actually be able to reprogram biology away from disease and from aging. N stands for nanotechnology. In the next 25 years, we will have blood cell-sized devices that go inside your body and keep you healthy from inside. That go in your brain and interact with your biological neurons and allow us to merge with non-biological intelligence. The third one goes by the letter R, which stands for robotics, robots. Really, though, refers to artificial intelligence. And that's the most significant revolution of all. In about 20 years, I've set the date 2029. Uh, a machine, an AI, will be able to match human intelligence and go beyond it. So artificial intelligence, which will give us not just more human intelligence, but will actually give us superhuman intelligence, uh, will enable us to solve problems that we're not able to solve today. Artificial blood cells are mentioned again in The Transcendent Man. Whoops. None of this is working. I'm sorry, oh, here it is. Okay. Biology is very impressive and intricate, clever but also very suboptimal compared to what we ultimately will be able to engineer with nanotechnology. We are building devices now that are at the nanoscale. This is a design of a robotic red blood cell. Conservative analysis of these respirocytes shows that if you were to replace a portion of your red blood cells with these robotic versions, you could do an Olympic sprint for 15 minutes without taking a breath or sit at the bottom of your pool for four hours. We'll be able to download software against specific pathogens, including ones that have never been seen before, not be subject to autoimmune disorders. And if you look at what will be, in principle, feasible with nanotechnology, we can go far beyond the limitations of our version one bodies. The robotic blood cells will supposedly improve us and keep us healthy, as he says. But what if that's just the gloss to sell us on such bodily intrusions? Just as we're being sold on the idea of a smart environment, a techno matrix that will vibrate with not just intelligence, but connection. 
What indeed is the World Wide Web? We may think it's the internet, but it will be the humming network of everything connected through ubiquitous intelligence, intelligence that is everywhere. Artificial intelligence will connect the world. Homo sapien will be transformed into Homo evolutis. Biological processes will be run by technology. Living things will not be reproductive. The earth will be populated with engineered species and all processes will be patented, licensed, and controlled. You could consider nanotechnology the installation of artificial intelligence in living and non-living things. Smart dust and smart moats, for instance, are tiny nanosensors that can float and land anywhere. As Kurzweil declares, self-replicating nanotechnology will infuse everything around us with itself. I see as a person, I'm human, and I'm really limited and restricted in what I do. So if I could come out of the singularity, being mentally and physically upgraded, yeah, I'd go for that. So I, I don't mind changing dramatically from what I am. I believe fully there will be flash memories you can plug into your brain. We'll be able to hook our brains into calculators and statistics programs and have uh, Google directly into the frontal lobes. I mean, there, there's going to be a lot of expansion of the mind through interfacing the human brain with, with technology. There's an unanswered question of how far can you go and still be human. As we merge with machines, and I think it's inevitable that we will, uh, we will transform into something new. And as the technology becomes vastly superior to what we are, then the small proportion that's still human gets smaller and smaller and smaller until it's just utterly negligible. Anybody who is going to be resisting this progress forward is going to be resisting evolution. And, and fundamentally, they will die out. It's not a matter whether it's good or bad. It's going to happen. You have seen today the deposition and active presence of artificial materials in the sky, environment, and in living things. Nanotechnology has arrived at our personal doorstep without our permission. It isn't that this will happen in 2045. It's already here. Human enhancement is being sold to us as leaping tall buildings in a single bound and having better, fa faster, higher intelligence, perfect health, but all of that is the sales pitch. Enhancement may in fact be degradation, our being devolved to someone else's specifications. While nanobiotechnology promises in headlines to make our world better, it may in fact be busy taking us over so it can tailor us to the plan for the hive. Already transhumanists are looking forward to the creation of the post-human. An improved human that will have no gender, will not reproduce, will be a better performer in the workplace, will not be distracted by love or lust, will be free of disease thanks to these nanobots keeping it healthy. But all this is part of the fantasy. In reality, thanks to stressors on our physiology, infertility is soaring. Our sexuality is diversifying, and the nuclear family is falling apart. Biotech is an exploding frontier. It is clever enough and small enough to enter and change our very cells. New forms of DNA have been invented. There is GNA, as I told you about, and PNA, a hybrid of protein and DNA, that will add to our double helix a third strand. <laughs> 